part of a final press release of the interministerial meeting on the training of paramedical personnel by certain institutes of higher education that was held on August 16 in Yaoundé read as follows. The following transitory measures were adopted as concerns holders of professional decrees, the BTS, HND, DCEP, and the HPD, and students currently in training for these cycles shall complete the training in respect of a training curricula in force for the training of paramedical personnel in the country. The Ministry of Public Health shall, in collaboration with the National Council of Paramedical Personnel, organize in the month of October 2024 a national aptitude test for paramedical per professionals holders as at this date of the professional degrees better as HND, DCEP, and HPD in view of their admission into the National Council of Paramedical Personnel. Holders of the professional degrees better as HND, DCEP, and HPD who shall not be successful in this aptitude test shall receive additional professional training following a jointly validated special program after an evaluation of the training curricula that is used. At the end of additional training, they shall then sit for the certification examination to be organized by the Ministry of Public Health. We shall be discussing these reforms taken by the Ministries of, of Health and the Ministry of Higher Education to um, reorganize the training of paramedical staff in Cameroon. And our guests are Professor Simon Manga. His assistant professor of reproductive health at the CBC Health Services and University of Alabama and Birmingham, uh, rep representing them here in Cameroon. Professor, you're welcome to the program. Thank you. When people saw assistant professor, they used to associate professor. <coughs> what does it? What's the difference? Yeah, and uh, it, it comes from the U.S. The U.S. Um, academic system. You know, people get in to the academia as instructors, then they grow into an assistant professor, and then they grow into an associate professor. Okay, thank yeah. you. We also have with us the Pendo Kingsley Mukom, who is a pharmacy technician. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you so much. And also Ayago Jonathan, a midwife. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs> so people are watching, asking the man, a midwife. Sure, sure, sure. I have the same feeling too that people <laughs> will say that uh, we are talking of a midwife and we are seeing a man. And we should also know that there are men who practice midwifery. Hmm, and Whether, women feel comfortable at least. comfortable from my experience, I think so. <laughs> and if you either call them mid husband or midwife, and nowadays you can call them martician. Ah, so okay, okay. There are many terms that we can use for that. But midwife goes. But right. midwife is the common term that is used by the society. Okay. Yeah, so people are comfortable with that. Dr. Tata Valentine is a member of the National Association of Private Higher Education Institutions. Welcome to the program, Doctor. Thank you very much, Moki. We shall also have Dr. Nick Mwanyam, a surgeon, a urologist, a founder of St. Louis University Institute, joining us from Dwell in the program. This is Twilight. This is CRTV News. I am Moki Edwin Kinzuka Nyaundi. I'll be right back. Let's begin in Douala with Dr. Nick Nguanyam, who has been following up these reforms in the training of paramedical staff in the country, taking part in the meetings organized by the Ministries of uh, Health and the Ministry of uh, and Higher Education. Uh, Dr. Nick Nguanyam, what has been your reading of the, what has been happening right to this moment? Yes, thank you very much. We had this meeting with the ministers in Yaoundé. Uh, the Minister of Health and the Minister of State for Higher Education, Professor Fomendongo, Minister of Health, Mr. Manauda Malashi, as well as the technical teams from both ministries. Uh, there was the order of nurses and, uh, and technicians involved, and then those of us from the Association of Private Higher Institutes, we also were there to try to look at this thorny problem that has been plaguing the field of uh, paramedical training and the ability to work on the field. So they came up with the, the Ministry of Health came up with this complaint that um, the students that are trained in uh, 
schools that are supervised by the Ministry of Higher Education, the training is not good enough. And uh, based on that, they said they would not register those students in the board of uh, uh, the nurses and the technicians. So this has been going on for years. St. Louis in particular has been in training now for 23 years, so it's a problem we are very familiar with. A problem we were, we were working on and hoping that it would be solved, but it has grown worse from year to year. And this problem became noticeable uh, to us in 2009. In 2009, um, those students that have left, had left from St. Louis because St. Louis started to send out students from as early as 2006. Uh, so in 2009, the government, um, the public service wanted to recruit 530 workers into the, into the, into the, into the health community to, to join the, the Ministry of Health. And uh, these 530 workers, they were nurses, doctors, and, and all sorts of people put together. And you'd be surprised that about 250 of those that were recruited were nurses, were, were nurses and paramedical staff that had graduated from St. Louis at the time, and they had their HPDs. So that, that, that started the problem when the people in the ministry noticed that they started to kind of like say, hey, you, you guys, you don't have to participate in our concurs. And so they started to shut us out, and uh, they started to fight the ministry and at that time they said they were not going to take those diplomas and all that they could they could uh, they could allow to pass were those who had first degrees so what we did was to to up our game and we we, we started the first degree programs and uh, and even with those first degrees along the line there was this excessive competition and the fight went on and so along the line they kind of like just stopped you know um paying attention to the stuff that come from private higher educa education and all these complications just went on and on until it has reached this head and there are about more than 26,000 of those that have been trained working on the lines. Just please just summarize what actually the problem you are meeting with the government to solve is please. At what can we do to, to bring the, 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 the level of training on both sides to a way that is, compar is, compar is comparative or comparable to what is happening in America? Can we learn from the American example and try to grow up ourselves? And I was saying, number one, that the curriculums for training in the Ministry of Health and Ministry of Higher Education should be harmonized. And to do that, so that it has an international content and recognition, the chassis or the basis should be 70% of material as covered in the best American universities. Then to that, we inject 30% of our own local content so that our products can be able to manage our tropical diseases and get to understand us. So that would have been the basis and um, the students of the Ministry of Health would use the same curriculum. The students of the Ministry of Higher Education would use the same curriculum. They would train for three years, write a common examination, and then when, when those that pass that common examination are registered in the board. And then they, they all now go in for another extra year to have the BSc in nursing or BSc in the technical fields to meet up with the international standards and the problem will be solved. Then those of them who, who have come through the Ministry of Higher Health, because the Ministry of Health insists that they must do the concourse or competitive exams to have students access into their into their into their systems. So those of them who did concourse, fine, fair enough, they can go on to work with the public service, but allow the people of the Ministry of Health, they, they recruit their students on a, the dossier. That is the presentation of your A-levels and the, or the back, you know, with a good pass. And then you are, you, you are admitted into the school and you are trained and you write the exam and pass fair and good. And and then you, you can go on your onward journey to, to Canada, to America, to, to wherever. Or you work locally in the private sector or wherever. And if you want to join the public service, then you write the public service concours and join. Because after all, you are a and you also have a right to work in the civil service. But we cannot be thinking as if all Cameroonians who are trained in Cameroon must work only for the public service. And I think that's where the ministers got it wrong. To think that they are training only for the public service and to say that because the Ministry of, of, of Health, Higher Education is training and they are also training, there are too many young people out there already and it, it frauds the job market. It's not true because the job market is not limited to the civil service and uh, having this narrow mindset is what is really killing Cameroon. 
we shall be coming back to you, Dr. Ning Guanyam. You are answering right from Dwala. But here in the studio, a young good Jonathan, your midwife, and a trainer for a long time, I'm told. Now, can you try to situate where the problem really is? Uh, thank you, sir. I think this problem in our country has been for quite a long time. And as we are saying, there are various groups of professionals who are being trained, those from the government health training institutions and those from the private health training institutions. And uh, they, I can look at the problem from two sides. There's a problem of practice on the field, quality care that we require. There's a problem of the growth of the professionals in their professions, either nursing, midwifery, pharmacy, and the like. So when the people get trained and they have to practice on the field, the, the basis is that the government and all of us want good quality practice for consumers on the field, for the health workers. But along the line, somewhere there have been problems. Problems because when you get trained as a worker and you are working on the field there, and at one stage you feel demotivated or you feel frustrated because you cannot progress, because the career profile does not provide room for you to go ahead. Like we are talking about this disparity between uh, uh, schools from uh, higher education and schools from public health. It becomes a problem. That affects the production or the productivity of the practitioner on the field. That's one aspect of it. And then when we have professionals trained and they have to work on the field, there is nothing that goes successfully with that control, continuous control. And in our country, and in generally in many countries, when the professions of nurses, midwives, health technicians are practicing, the council has powers to control professional practice. And how does the council control pro professional practice? It has to get practitioners enrolled in their registers. They know that we have so many number of practitioners in our country, and they are going to organize them. So how these practitioners are going to control uh, on the field as they practice in order to ensure that they are delivering good quality service. But in a situation where the, uh, the council doesn't have hold of these practitioners, for example, now that we are talking about those who have enrolled into the association as they are regularly trained in the health training uh, schools, those who have not registered or they have been refused to be registered in the council because they are either in the HPD or HND and all the like, we find out on the field there will be conflict and there will be frustration and there will be problems. It seems as if there is discrimination. We are all Cameroonians who are trained. Why is it that these ones are getting registered that they can practice? Why is it that they say difficult with these ones who are not registered? So that's, those who are registered with the government who leave the Ministry of Higher Education trained there are those who, that more than those who are trained with the H and the level of the Minister of Public Health. Yes, yeah, at the level of the Minister of Public Health, those schools that are under the Minister of Public Health, professionals who come out of the regular register and the council with no problem, and they go on the field are practicing. But those who are coming from the schools, the higher institute under the, uh, the, the higher education, they have difficulties because they have those the certificate of H and D, H P D, and and the like, because the council does not accept them. And the reason, as I, as I meant to understand, is that the, the council feels that the programs of the schools from the higher institute, they are not uh, competent, I don't know. They do not suit programs that are being followed by the schools under the Ministry of Public Health, but where they authorize the practitioner to, therefore, they refuse them to, 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 to get registered into a system, and therefore, they have no control. And again, when you look at, generally at the role of the professional uh, council in our country. Because of some of these difficulties, to a certain extent, you'll find out that we hardly even feel the action of the council. The council is existing, I know. The council uh, was created by law in 1984. And it, has, and it is the umbrella association created by government, which is supposed to control professional practice for all these professionals, nurses, midwives, health technicians. And it is supposed to crop, but then, because of many difficulties they have had, we should say it is not active at all. Therefore, on the field, you find anything. Any so the, the, the meeting control. is to solve the problems you are trying to raise here. Yes, the meeting between the two bodies. That is why the two ministerial departments we think that at least the, it, it is something we should be happy now. But at least after all these years of dealing with this problem, the two ministerial departments have come together and try. They are trying to examine all these problems that we have been crying about to have a way way forward. And that is why they have come out with those uh, resolutions. And thank you. If it is to solve the problem, Dr. Tata, um, then why are they? Why are people complaining? Why are the health workers complaining? The, the 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 problem 
um, it's not about trying to solve the, the, the problem exactly because we are tackling a different problem from a different angle completely. What is the problem? We've talked about the curriculum, which we need to harmonize. That is one. But they've gone further to equally say that the, the, the formation that we have in our professional structures is not up to date. But they forget that the h and system is a system which was copied from the United Kingdom. It started way back in the United Kingdom and by and, uh, uh, common world countries took that, that program. Cameroon took that program in 2002. We have graduated a lot of professionals. Dr. Mgajam says about 26,000. About 26,000. And then how do we get up one morning and they claim that the formation which we've had for, for, for close to 20-something years is not up to standard. Is it a level of harmonizing the certificates or that the training is not up to standard? Then how, are they been pro how are they been practicing ever since? Uh, the, uh, that is the, exactly the problem because uh, our graduates who have been practicing both in and out of the country, none of them has ever been revoked. For, for bad practice, those who are out of the country, none of them have ever been, been repatriated because he had a diploma which was not up to standard. Because that's one of the points which they even claim, that the diplomas are not even recognized internationally. So how then can a ministry like that of higher education have a program and then a council is going to sit and say it, 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 it's, it's, not, it's not a program which is up to date? Mr. Dependo, Kings Dimokom, what is the problem? Thank you so much, sir. It's really a lot on the table. First, we have trained people for 20 years, just like uh, my colleague here is saying. We have trained people for 20 years. If we come up to say they are useless... No, or, no but I've not read anywhere that they are useless. Yes, that the, uh, it, the, the It's a level of harmonizing the certificates they have. That's what I'm, I seem to be saying All right, here. harmonization is good. I've been fortunate or privileged to work in these two systems. I work with the curriculum of the Ministry of Public Health and I work with the curriculum of the Ministry of Higher Education. And, uh, uh, and to make us know, I would just like to put a question. Uh, why did the Ministry of Public Health switch from sequential to semester system? That was copying what those in the Ministry of Higher Education were doing. I know year back, the Ministry of Public Health was training nurses, midwives and laboratory technicians. Higher institution brought in physiotherapy, dentistry, MIT, and uh, pharmacy technicians to solve a problem because this department were lacking in the health system. So when they brought up this now, and it's thanks to this higher institution that have brought in this new innovation, this new technical department, that today the health sector has even created more impact and it could solve more problems because the hospital was not all about the nurse, the midwife, and the laboratory technicians. Today, if it is okay, because normally, if they ask you to indicate health workers in the country, definitely the Ministry of Public Health takes that responsibility. If it said this is a nurse, you have to accept that it is a nurse. It should come from the Ministry of Public Health. That is fine. But the approach and the losses that are associated with this movement are so much that if we not take them to consideration, it will be like, all this effort that the Ministry of Higher Education has put in is not appropriately appreciated. Just like my panelists were saying, there is no statistic anywhere that HND holders have caused problems with the health sector in Cameroon. There is absolutely no statistics, which means there is no pro It's just a feeling which we are coming to the table to look at it, and uh, harmonization is justified. And in this uh, communique press release we have read, there is something there that to me is sound catastrophic. It's abstract that somebody will study for three years with a state diploma and it becomes an equivalent of a professional ma uh, bachelor degree. Let, let me read what is written here. Holders of the professional degree, the BTS, HND, uh, the SEP, who shall not be successful in the aptitude test shall receive additional professional training following a jointly validated special program after an evaluation of the training curricula used. At the end of additional training, they shall then sit for the certification examination to be organized by the Ministry of Public Health. That's what you people decided during that meeting, and the minister signed. Where are you seeing the problem now? Now, this ap uh, aptitude test they're talking about first, as I said, we're talking about HND has been at least 20 years or so now. And uh, another issue is that, just in quote, most of the graduates of public health, especially this technical department, have been trained by HND graduates because there were no uh, physiotherapy, MIT dental therapy training in Cameroon. 
HND Higher Institution brought it. So they have trained technicians in this institution for the Ministry of Public Health. Then you turn and tell them that they are to be subject to aptitude tests. Now what of the trainees, those that they have trained? That's an issue. So in my opinion, those who are having the HND, the HPD, should their effort should be appreciated and are recognized in the council and they draw a line. From now hence, we shall talk about solutions. Now, Professor Simon Manga, Simon Manga, yeah. what has been your reading of all of this happening now in the country? I mean, you have been observing from afar, mm -hmm. not really be uh, involved, but you should know at, uh, actually what is happening. Yeah, sure. But I want to think that the government is taking a very good step to harmonize um, training. Um, there is confusion in the training in Cameroon, training of um, health professionals. For example, um several years ago to be a nurse you needed to be a state register you needed to enter the profession as a state registered nurse with advanced level and then later on the, the higher education came in with a bachelor's degree of nursing which was the same entering qualification as advanced level so now two people have advanced level one is going to do three years to come out as a state registered nurse one is going to do four years to come out as a, a bachelor's um, degree holder of nursing. Then suddenly something came in between, which was HND. And you still need advanced level to go in to do HND, the same profession. When a professional has several entry points, there is just bound to be confusion. Normally, a noble profession should have just one entry point. So I think what the government is trying to do to harmonize this is good but my fear is the the steps the way in which the government is coming in uh like asking people who have been trained for the past 20 years to come back for an aptitude test that is where there is going to be more problems to my opinion the government would have just like let us fix it from here going forward but trying to go and fix it from behind it may create a lot of problems and then the, the, the community also says that those who will not make it we have to be retrained here they will need additional training it means i'll be going back to school how long are they going to be in school are they going to pay school fees and so on and so forth these people are already working they have to leave where they are working their job site to go back to school it is going to create more problems that's okay. my opinion our midwife man <laughs> now um, clarify something as people are sending messages unfortunately i cannot uh, be reading them have they suspended the training of paramedical staff at the level of university uh, higher institutes because people are asking that they heard that they have suspended the training let's make things clear for them yes, uh, uh, i think i have also gone uh, over the resolutions which have been taken by that meeting that was held recently there is no there is no statement there saying that training of uh, health workers in the high institution has been suspended. There is no such statement there. I think people are just being too anxious and they are just imagining certain issues and uh, voicing them out. There is nothing which is stated there clearly like that. But uh, what I want to say really honestly is that uh, we are at least somewhere. We are at least somewhere. The government has started doing something because in fact in the final analysis what we expect on the field there for sick people in common for the society is quality care quality health care for the people whether the practitioners are being trained by ministry of higher education or ministry of public health we expect the practice out there to be so that people are contented with health care delivery and to do that as I think, as to do that, we need to come together. Now that the process of examination of uh, these problems has started and it is ongoing, I know it is not the end. It has just begun. And as time goes on, the discussions are going on and examination by the technical committees are going on. All the facets of the problem will be coming up and we'll look for ways. And I think the government is going to look for ways to solve those problems. And I think that's it. But for now, and I thought, there is no situation that has no difficulty for now. 
they are going to have some time when a situation happens that those who suffer from it, there are some people who benefit from it, but in the final analysis, we, we are moving ahead because the country is moving and going ahead. The development in healthcare, there are many changes and everything. So when it even comes to the curricula we are talking about, these things are going to be revised to match up with the current trends in healthcare delivery. I, I'm so that somebody, I used to hear of assistant nurses, uh, state registered nurses and so on, but I'm, I'm here, I'm not getting anything about assistant nurses. What is the difference in yeah, the Assistant nurses, nurses assistant, those are some of the health, uh, practitioners who were trained formally. Formally, when we started training, started training in Cameroon, they were assistant nurses, they were assistant midwives. But as time went on, you see, I think those phases of training had been erased, but you still have uh, brevet nurses somewhere. But generally, that phase has when been they were erased. erased now, the problems did not come up, are they coming up now? No, they, they, they didn't come up now, but as I say, as time goes on, the, the problems keep piling. They keep piling and coming up, and somewhere it will erupt. And some way it keeps the rocks. Now, let me read this. Anna. That was uh, that at the end of the constructive and fruitful discussions, the following resolutions were con uh, uh, consensually arrived at. One, concerning the paramedical training of health professionals in some institutes of higher education, the readjustment from the 2024 2025 academic year of the training of these personnel in higher education institutions so as to align them to the, the training cycles towards obtaining the state diploma issued by the Minister of Public Health. What's your comment on that, Doctor? Um, uh, as we, 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 we see that the, that the point came, it was unanimous, and at some point, uh, we doubt, we doubt because. We're looking at the timing, we're looking at procedures. We are at the verge of the beginning of a school year, and then we are talking about adjustments or readjustments at the verge of a school year. There are students who have received orientation who already made up their minds. And let us, let us be, be clear, we are not mixing what? The, the training of the students for the first year is suspended. But the second and third years have to finish their program. Now, when students, there are schools that already recruited students who even paid fees. Wait, training for the first year is suspended? That is exactly the interpretation in the context. We've had those issues and we've been, depend and we've been debating heavily on them. Because we are not refusing that they, are not, that they should not be re reforms. But the way in which the reforms come is the problem. We have to harmonize issues, yes. But at what time? Where are we? Look at structures. We have founders who have put in place heavy structures, who have borrowed money, who have done a lot of publicity, who have staff to pay, who have even recruited staff and have already even started paying. And at the beginning, we have such kind of re re reforms. It is a serious issue. And we believe that the actors in place should still have a retort. First of all, there are tax governing higher education and there are tax equally governing the HND or the BTS programs. If we have such, because at some point we are tempted to say that what was read out was a communique and not a text. A text has to go through a review, which of course as of now has not been done. For now, this is a final press release that I've been trying to read. A press release, yes, like we say. That's what was decided. But not a text. Yeah. Okay. We, have to, we have to look at the various laws as they are and look at the procedures of coming out with the text. Now, let me ask you in this co-mentorship Academic, uh, academic by the Ministry of Higher Education and technical by Ministry of Health of the Paramedical Training of Health Personnel following harmonized modalities both at the entrance and at the end of the training by the Ministry of Health. Okay. What is the understanding of this? Yeah, thank you so much. That, uh, simply put, it means the Ministry of Public Health has technical role and responsibility with the trainings and the Ministry of Higher Education has the academic role. For instance, who identify you as a health personnel? Minister of Public Health, that's good. And Minister of Public Health, you enter that uh, domain by having the state diploma. Now, who proceeds or takes you further in the career is Ministry of Higher Education. So definitely that means the Minister of Public Health will give you the name as a nurse, as a lab technician, as a dental therapist. Then you end there with the Minister of Public Health. You have the identity. You have been accepted. Now for you not to remain stagnant, the, uh, the Ministry of Higher Education will now come in. You want to go in for the bachelor, you want to go in for the master's, PhD, and it's now the responsibility of the Minister of Higher Education to handle that.
That is what comes down next year as regards the delivery of equivalent respective academic titles to the grades of baccalaureate GC advanced level plus three years and baccalaureate GC advanced level plus five years to holders of state certificates issued by the Ministry of Health. The training curricula shall be approved by the Ministry of Higher Education following a criteria to be agreed upon by both ministries. So what that, is that, that goes, I think that goes in line with what is is, is saying. That uh, at the level of higher education, when the professionals leave from the basic training, the past, for example, from the uh, government uh, training uh, health institutions, they will have to accept the BSc and master's degree. That's under the Ministry of Higher Education, which is purely concerned with the academics there. And then, uh, when it comes to the technical aspect of it, like we're talking uh, f formally, the technical aspect of it, it, it dwells now on the Ministry of Public Health, which, from where we are talking about the council, which has that supervisory authority over the professional practice in the field. And that goes through now with the council. But again, in the final analysis, we are saying that it is the two ministries that are working together, as we say, to harmonize everything to go smoothly so that the students and the young communities are not strained, they are not traumatized too much. That is the reason too why they say for those of them who are not really in school, we can't traumatize them so much now. They only need to have some touch or whatever over the program to see that at the end that they are graduating, everything already goes smooth and they are registered to the council with no more problems. But what my colleagues are saying that I have not had it quite clear where it is stated that for this academic year there will be no admissions. There is a meeting which is supposed to take place today. It's going on now. an urgent meeting mm -hmm. which is taking place today. And as I say, something has started. It is proceeding, and I say all aspects of the problem will be coming in and we identify they will be solved. So we are even expecting that when this type of problem is coming today, the technical meeting that is coming, they may be able to look at that because it's a big question everywhere. What happens this year, this year of entry? It's a big question, and it is worrying so many people. And of course, I think the participants in the technical meeting today are not unaware of that. So probably we may have some other developments coming out. Well, if there's something have, we have agreed here generally is that there was cacophony before now as concerns the certificates, the issue of certificates and the grades when they left, when when the uh, students left, when they were trained. And that the government is coming up now to try to solve the problem. Let's uh, move back to Dwala and meet Dr. Nick Gwanyam. There have always been claims that uh, people trained in some of the institutions are less competitive or more qualified or live with more talents than the others. What is your take on that, Dr. Ningwanyam? So as you see, when they say that this the staff that are trained by the Ministry of Higher Education are not good enough, they could be right. They could be right, you know. After all, when you have a class of a hundred children and you train, it's not all of them that pass their exams. So technically you could still put out people there who have passed exams, but on the field, some will not be as good, some will be good. And um, I'm still to see, uh, you know, there, there are issues of character, you, you know, you could still be even very bright, but on the field, you know, you, 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 you are poorly behaved, you have poor character, so you will not survive. Um, this is, we are training the same Cameroonian children, some are good, some are bad. So, um, in as much as the Ministry of Health is also training, and they, there's no way they can claim that all their students are very bright, and those that are trained by the Ministry of Higher Education, all these ones are very, are very bad. It's not true. And there is a way of testing it. And I think we have come to that point. And another thing I need to say is that, you know, nurses, the, 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 the quality and level of nurses is rising all over in the world. At the, at, at the start, we had these nurse aides, and then we had state registered nurses and diploma data, which was three years after A-levels. Today, on the international scale, a nurse is one who has trained for four years. That's, that's the, that's the cutoff point now. And therefore, we are saying that we should all up, up our game to these four years and then change our curriculums to be able to train youth in such a way that they, they are working at this international level so that we don't keep having these problems. If we are going to have people working in Cameroon, they should be good. They must not be good only for Cameroon. They should be good enough to work in Cameroon and then also work abroad. And to try to stop our children from working abroad is not is not healthy at all it's counterproductive and it just shows that we are not thinking out of the box we want to thank you very much for your time but before you leave us dr nick guanyam uh, of the um the st louis uh, university institute what are the changes that you really want that you're proposing to the government to affect us from now back to our two main problems number one students that are trained 
from from the from the schools of the Ministry of Higher Education are not registered in the board. Number two, students that are trained under the Ministry of of Public Health after the three years they are not allowed to continue in institutions of the ministry of higher education to go up and have their first degrees masters and so on so there has been this fight and each, and each one shutting their doors on the other now during that meeting uh, minister famen dongu uh, they read the law that was uh, that organizes this training and they came they came to the conclusion that the, the law itself because there it was the law then there was decrease and rts the law the law that gives um, the ministry of higher education its prerogatives or defines its task just just throws it out and says that the ministry of higher education is responsible for training youth in cameroon but it does not say you train in this and you don't train in this so the law was not specific on that then when it comes to the law uh, that is governing the ministry of health it says the ministry of health is responsible for training health personnel so that's that's that, that's where the difficulty came and the and the minister and his team from the ministry of um, of, of of health they were arguing that even though the law on, on higher education says the minister of higher education has the 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 the, 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 the wherewithal to train all youths but the Ministry of Higher Education cannot train soldiers, cannot train people in Enam. So they were trying to, to bring this on board to say that, look, there are some specificities and you should not go there. And one of those specificities, specificities is training paramedical staff. But it would be good to, to mention here that the medical doctors in Cameroon, the pharmacists in Cameroon, and the dentists in Cameroon are trained by the Ministry of Higher Education, but they have a joint committee made of the Minister of Health and Minister of Higher Education that organize these exam, exams and training, and they co-sign their certificates. So, you know, the Minister of, of, of Higher Education tried to give them something so that he could take, take, it, take back something as well. So he offered to give them this thing in French that they call licence professionnelle, which meant that he was going to just issue out this licence professionnelle to all the nurses that have left schools of the Ministry of Public Health, so that with that licence professionnel they can come into, you know, they can they, they, they can be upgraded and, and 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 given an entry into the schools of higher education. But I have a problem with that because what the Minister of Higher Education just did was to sign a blank check and to issue this licence to every Tom Dick and Harry without cross-checking them. So the the honourable thing to have done would be to say, look. All those students too that have gone through the Ministry of Health training will be put through a certain test to find out you know your levels those of them that have done well will can be given that license so that they can continue or uh, or they would have said all those that have uh, finished the third year go back into the schools of, of higher education into the third year and then continue your mobility up but to just d to distribute certificates to them I think it's wrong Thank you, Dr. Nick Nguanyam. We shall be having part two of this program uh, when we expect to have officials of the Minister of Public Health to give more clarification on certain issues that may have uh, not been brought up here. But, Dr. Prof, um, I know you're here to talk about so many advantages, opportunities for doctors and those who have the doctorate. But before we get there, can you advise both the owners of these private institutions and the government on what should be done for things to move on normally without this gnashing of teeth? I think it might even be difficult to give an advice at this point when meetings are still going on, their conversations are still going on. I think we just need to be patient and then see what comes out at the end, especially from the meetings that are going on today. I have got Jonathan. What do you think should be the most important message that people who are watching should take home now? Uh, for me, I think uh, people out there, all of us in the profession, we are quite worried, but we need a bit of patience. As I say, the government has started something. The government, the private sector, and all of us, the stakeholders, have started something. We are trying to solve a problem. That problem has so many facets, so we need to exercise a bit of patience. And I think the government and all those concerned are, are for good, for good quality care in our country, for uh, the health consumers outside there to have better care. I think in the, in the final analysis, that's what it means. Because whether it concerns 
entry to the experience room, control of the training programs, control of professional practice, the final analysis will want good quality care for the people. And particularly in midwifery, um, the issue of maternal mortality, maternal infant mortality has been a problem. That's why the government will open particular school for training of midwives. After they were one sealed, the everyone, they were not trained for a very long time. No, no, no. no. There was, from the onset, from, from the onset, the midwifery programs were being run together with the nurses. So we were having nurse midwifery together. But uh, after some time, as I said, this problem of maternal mortality was becoming a very big problem in Cameroon. So the government and that, and they opened midwifery schools. Those, like we are saying, candidates with A levels, they get straight into a midwifery school. They are going to come out after three years as midwives, especially for uh, midwifery departments in who, the health who facilities. Signed the certificates? Who signed the certificates? The there? Minister of Public Health. And Mr. that's where the problem public. has been posed. Yeah, those, as as I said, those are aspects of the problem. As <laughs> we say, we have started <laughs> and many more will be coming. They will be examined. Mm-hmm. All for the good of everybody. Independent Kings, the Mokom, please, are you giving the assurance that the quality of training that is issued is not a problem now? It's just a problem of certificates and how the people, are, the students are being handled now. Those are, who graduated a long time ago and those who will be going to level one. Yeah, thank you so much. I strongly stand on that that the Ministry of Higher Education and the institutions have been given training of good quality. I'm a proud and successful example. I was trained by the Ministry of Higher Education, and that was when, after advanced level, with the uncertainties with Konku, I was a brilliant student, but humbled by Konku. When I knocked at the door of these institutions, to be specified, uh, one of them, Senri University, took me in. I started receiving my salary three years after advanced level. So my life was changed. It's not only me. I'm talking about about 500 pharmacy technicians who have been trained who are actively making a living, succeeding in life because of this input of the Ministry of Higher Education and the institutions. So they have done credible work, which if we are changing the father from being the Ministry of Higher Education to the Ministry of Public Health, it shouldn't be as if the Ministry of Higher Education did not do something right or did not train qualified or competent personnel and put in the system. Dr. Tata, you have to add to what you expect now. <laughs> yes, uh, the first, first uh, point is... Uh, we, sh- we should be clear. We should be clear on one thing, which is what uh, we of the private uh, higher institutions are looking for: the training of students for medical into the HND or BTS fields is supposed to stay. That is our first point: is that it should stay at the level of the curriculum. If the problem is a curriculum, we can do a swap of the curriculum, and we continue with the training because taking off. The HND or BTS from higher education is a very big blow. First of all, look at the number of students who even come in for these programs. It means they understand the professional notion of this training given to them by higher education. They are not ignorant of the fact that we have the training given by, 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 by public health. But they still choose to come to our institutions because they know that what we are doing makes a lot of sense and is valuable everywhere. So if the problem is a layer of, of certification or, or training, let them give us just the, the look at the re- review of the program that we have in, in, in place and then give us the other one or modify because it doesn't mean it's it's bad either way because we've had professionals like, like uh, 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 Dr. Nick said who are practicing and who have not had any difficulty. So that is our own that we want as of now is that we maintain the HND and BTS in the medical fields, whatever is happening should happen. Turn around. Mm-hmm. But if the government is going ahead, that there. this thing should be harmonized. I don't think we should well, sit on staying. There are what series of meetings before. going on, just like you know, a meeting is going uh, going on right now because you understand that the founders are of of these institutions and are not happy. They are not happy with, with such such decisions. Like we say, what about what has been put in place? To make not sure dis- that we get this I think, quality I think students. You just said it's not, they're not destroying what has been put in place, yes, right? Yes, I do not think that according to the resolution from that meeting, they are not taking away the training of HND, HPD from the high They are not taking them away. We have read here that they are going to coordinate. There's going to be some work to, to, going to, done, to, to be done to touch the syllabuses so that they, they are in agreement. And when these students are going out, they automatically get their registration. And, they, and then they are feeling now the council takes its road. They are not taking away the training. Thank of you. Let, let's let, let, Yes, the, 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 the problem is just that uh, we have what we call a law or t- 
context and interpretation of this text. If the interpretation is that they are not taking it away, no. then we are d'accord. No. But if the interpretation is that there will be no intake for the first year, that you are going to migrate it to fall under... I have not, I've not seen that yet. Uh -huh. And I know there are meetings still going on. The press release right here did not say, does not say anything about the first year and so on. So let's give the students who are getting set to uh, go to university hope that the government of the Republic is listening to them. There are many, many uh, meetings that are ongoing to solve these problems. And after that, it will be smiles for uh, the, both the students, the government, even those who go just to hospitals for healthcare delivery. They need them. Now, Professor Simon Manga. You came here with some good news for some people of this profession. Please tell them. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to talk about a, a one-year fully funded uh, postdoctoral fellowship for health professionals. Um, it is sponsored by the National Institute of Health (NIH), and uh, it is run by a consortium of uh, four universities in the U.S including the University of Alabama at Birmingham, the University of Maryland, Baltimore, the University of Pittsburgh, and the Belo School of Medicine. Um, to be eligible for this um, award, you need to have a doctorate degree. A doctorate degree in a health-related field. It could come from behavioral sciences, social sciences, clinical sciences, and laboratory sciences. So all what we need you need to have is a, a doctorate degree. Could be a PhD, could be an MD, could be a DRPH, whatever DNP. And um, the opportunity is open to 20 countries in the world. As I said, it's fully funded. So fully funded includes a monthly stipend. So you are going to be receiving a stipend like a salary per month during the one year of fellowship. And that is for to cover those who will want to take a break from work or those who want to work part-time or those who want to even take a leave of absence. They are not going to struggle because that is going to, to keep them going during the, the fellowship here. And every candidate is expected to visit um, a host university at least uh, once during the, the training. Now, in the case of Cameroon, um, our host university is the University of Alabama at Birmingham. And so when a Cameroonian is applying, normally you need two mentors. One mentor from your host country, that is Cameroon, and a second mentor from the host university. So in Cameroon, um, a mentor for this program must come from the CBC Health Services or the University of Boya. That is a must, because these are the two organizations in Cameroon that are affiliated with the University of Alabama. And then to, you have to also get a mentor in the University of um, Alabama. Now, it may become difficult getting a mentor since you are in Cameroon. You may, uh, how do you get a mentor in the University of Alabama in the U.S.? So that is why I'm here to help to connect since I work for both CBCHS and the University of Professor, Alabama. we just take a short break. When we come back from the, the break, you continue okay. to give that information I think is useful. And please give contacts and also where they can get you to be able to benefit from these opportunities. Let's have a break. C'est une nouvelle dynamique qui s'installe dans la coopération entre le Cameroun et la Banque mondiale. Le nouveau cadre de partenariat entre les deux institutions présage des retombées plus utiles au développement du pays. Le conseil d'administration vient d'approuver euh, le cadre de partenariat pays entre le Cameroun et le groupe de la Banque mondiale. Sur ce cadre de partenariat, comment s'assurer de sa mise en œuvre efficace et 
effectif, mais aussi de l'ensemble des, des enjeux. Au cours de l'audience de ce lundi, Alamin Ousmane May et son hôte Abdul Salam Bello font de la question de la mobilisation des fonds en faveur du Cameroun une priorité. Une urgence. Nous sommes dans une discussion pour la reconstitution, donc la remobilisation. Et donc nous avons compté aussi, bien entendu, sur les, les conseils, les analyses de, de Monsieur le ministre. Parmi les projets prioritaires visés, celui de l'accès à l'électricité en Afrique. Donner l'accès à l'électricité à plus de euh, 300 millions d'Africains d'ici 2030. Nous avons un grand programme qui s'appelle le programme de Nashtigal, que vous connaissez tous, qui est un modèle. Jusqu'au 23 août prochain, l'administrateur de la Banque mondiale pour le Cameroun rencontrera d'autres personnalités, dont le premier ministre chef du gouvernement, pour d'autres sujets utiles au développement du Cameroun. Le pox, encore appelé variole du singe, sévit désormais au Cameroun. Déjà deux décès dans le pays, à côté de cinq cas confirmés et 30 autres suspects. Des informations contenues dans un communiqué du ministre de la Santé publique, signé le 16 août dernier. L'épidémie touche également plusieurs autres pays en Afrique, la République démocratique du Congo, la République centrafricaine, le Nigeria, le Burundi, le Kenya et l'Ouganda. Compte tenu de cette propagation inédite d'une porc sur le continent, le ministère de la Santé publique avec d'autres administrations, partenaires techniques et financiers ont entrepris des mesures afin de s'y conscrire et maîtriser la propagation de l'épidémie au Cameroun et éviter l'importation des cas supplémentaires. Les mécanismes de surveillance épidémiologique ont été renforcés dans les zones les plus touchées, les régions du nord-ouest, sud-ouest, littoral, centre et est. Des initiatives en plus des activités de sensibilisation et de mobilisation communautaire dans les zones à risque. Malachi Manaouda recommande en plus d'observer les mesures de prévention telles que se laver les mains après avoir été en contact avec un animal ou une personne présentant des éruptions cutanées accompagnées de fièvre. L'expérience Covid est convoquée pour tout le monde. Les cinq cas confirmés au Imports en 2024 dans le sud-ouest et le nord-ouest consultent l'urgence de santé publique. Le centre de coordination des opérations d'urgence de santé publique a d'ailleurs déjà installé la haute surveillance épidémiologique à travers le pays. La prise en charge des cas effectifs est gratuite dans les formations sanitaires. On doit pouvoir identifier le, leurs contacts, les suivre pour être sûr qu'ils ne développent pas la maladie ultérieurement. C'est des investigations approfondies autour des cas. C'est le renforcement de la communication et de la sensibilisation. Le Cameroun partage plusieurs frontières, dont celle avec la RD Congo, où on enregistre une seconde souche plus dangereuse et mortelle du MPOX. Ici, on ne parle pas encore de taux de létalité, mais les centres de santé sont informés et formés pour prendre en charge le moindre cas de soupçon. C'est à ce niveau qu'un diagnostic approprié pourra être posé parce qu'il y a des di diagnostics différentiels au MPOX. Également, le numéro vers 15-10, le vaccin est timide. Voilà pourquoi il faut se ménager en portant des masques ou se laver les mains à volonté. Elle peut également être transmise de l'homme à l'homme lorsqu'on a un contact rapproché avec une personne malade. Depuis 2022, le ministère de la Santé publique est aux prises avec cette variole de singe pour complètement retenir sa propagation. Au Cameroun, nous devons être plus vigilants face à une éventuelle importation de Mpox dans notre pays et notamment d'un nouveau variant qui pourrait être plus virulent. Les habitants des forêts denses, humides ou mangeurs de rongeurs doivent rester sur leur garde. Le virus attaque où il y a des gestes maladroits et où l'hygiène n'est pas systématique. Il est 11h tapante lorsque nous foulons le seuil de ce centre de santé situé au quartier Mélène, ici à Yaoundé. Aucun contrôle effectué à notre arrivée. Le personnel médical chargé, entre autres, de filtrer les entrées, est affairé. Cette tâche, il la partage avec des agents de sécurité d'ailleurs absents à leur poste de travail ce jour. On a un gardien qui assure la sécurité et aussi à l'accueil, il y a les infirmières qui s'assurent que les gens n'entrent pas n'importe comment. 
Pas de caméra de surveillance, certes, mais cette mention est claire et certes rappelle à tous. La structure hospitalière met un point d'honneur quant à la protection des patients. Pour les femmes qui viennent accoucher, ils choisissent un structure qui sont sûrs. Parce qu'on a eu les cas où les nouveaux-nés sont sortis bien portants et tout. Après la cinquième jour, l'enfant fait la fièvre parce que les membres de famille veulent toucher l'enfant. Veulent... La sécurité est pourtant un des faits qui conditionne le choix d'un hôpital et les familles se doivent de veiller d'être au chevet de leur passion. Au-delà de la responsabilité de la structure, la mère d'enfant qui vient accoucher dans une, dans une structure hospitalière devrait se faire accompagner pour davantage sécuriser ses mouvements elle-même et pour que l'enfant ne reste pas seul. Dans la plupart des cas de vol de bébé, c'est que l'enfant se retrouve seul. De nombreuses ripostes employées limitent aujourd'hui les incidents dans les hôpitaux, notamment réduire l'accès dans les salles de maternité et se doter des caméras de surveillance, entre autres. C'est la mort dans l'âme que beaucoup de femmes n'arrivent pas à donner la vie. La femme n'acquiert dans notre société le statut de femme que lorsqu'elle devient mère ou épouse. Et parfois même, son identité en tant que femme est mise en danger si elle s'écarte de cette norme sociale. Dans un tel contexte, l'incapacité d'avoir un enfant ou l'infertilité devient comme une fatalité. La pression des proches monte, la santé mentale en prend un coup, on craque et puis on finit par commettre l'irréparable, l'impardonnable. Tel que par exemple le vol d'enfants. Rien ne justifie le vol d'un bébé. La société le condamne avec fermeté. Et pourtant, sur les réseaux sociaux, il ne se passe pas une semaine sans qu'un avis de recherche d'un nourrisson soit partagé. Le désespoir des femmes stériles n'en est pas le seul mobile. Dans la conception spirituelle, l'enfant est garni d'une puissance spirituelle inégalable. Et donc cela justifie le fait que parfois, certaines personnes volent des bébés pour les livrer dans des rites ésotériques ou alors dans des sacrifices rituels. La vigilance est requise au sein des familles pour que plus jamais un bébé ne soit volé. L'intention du gouvernement, celle de tordre le cou à la crise alimentaire, la dynamique est en marche dans le nord-ouest. Pour cette première phase, la priorité est accordée aux éleveurs vulnérables dont l'économie a été sévèrement affectée par la crise sociopolitique. Ce qu'on les a donné aujourd'hui, qu'ils essaient de voir comment ils peuvent utiliser ça pour assister, non pas seulement leur famille, mais aussi les voisins. C'est au total 17 500 poussins de 21 jours, 2 340 pondeuses, 560 sacs d'aliments complets et plusieurs autres accessoires qui apportent du confort dans l'alimentation des volailles. Vraiment, nous remercions de grand cœur le gouvernement de la République, surtout son Excellence, le président Paul Biya, à travers l'initiative du ministère de l'élevage, des pêches et des industries animales. Nous sommes vraiment très enchantés. Le chef de l'État a bien voulu mettre du grain à moudre dans le moulin de nos agriculteurs et nos éleveurs dans la région du Nord-Ouest afin de lancer leur euh, activité commerciale autonome, hein, renforcer l'autonomie et contribuer au retour à la paix globale dans la région du Nord-Ouest. Les bénéficiaires partis des sept départements de la région ont été sélectionnés sur la base des critères de vulnérabilité minutieusement conduits par les chefs traditionnels. Cette opération, dit-il, va se poursuivre dans les mois à venir. Fondation André Zico, champion du Cameroun de handball Messieurs édition 2024. Les fans sont dominés les forces armées et police 27 points contre 20 à l'issue des deux manches de la partie. Une victoire préparée pour le sacre, mais des réglages à faire pour les compétitions à venir. Sur le plan technique, nos jeunes ont été un peu plus percutants que les jeunes de, de, de FAP. En Afrique, il faut savoir que les équipes sont un peu plus véloces, sont physiquement mieux préparées. Maintenant, il faut pouvoir trouver les moyens de dire à nos joueurs non. Il faut aussi pouvoir prendre des tirs de loin. En bloc serré et compact, la différence est faite sur le collectif qu'il faut maintenir pour la fin de la saison, les playoffs. C'est toujours une grande joie que de recevoir le titre de meilleur joueur, mais avant tout, moi, j'aimerais saluer 
la prestation collective. Tout de suite, on va se remettre au travail pour préparer à la fois les playoffs. Nous espérons sortir au terme de la championne du Cameroun et nous avons également la, la compétition en octobre à, au Maroc. Après le sacre de la Coupe, Fans a pour ambition de conquérir l'Afrique au 45e championnat d'Afrique des clubs champions au Maroc du 10 au 19 octobre 2024. Rendez-vous en compétition. Professor Simon Manga, before we took a break, you are giving us some information on opportunities for those who want to further their studies. Yeah, yeah. I was talking about a, a fully funded postdoctoral uh, fellowship, which um, has um, carries monthly stipend so that the candidate can really focus on his work. And it also has um, research funds because during that year, the candidate or the fellow is supposed to carry out a research project. And it also carries um, travel allowance, which the fellow will have to travel to the U.S. and come back. It is open to 20 countries, Cameroon um, inclusive, and um, it is highly competitive. So I want to encourage those with um, strong CVs and strong research proposal to, to apply. There are four um, disease tracks that um, are open for this fellowship. That is um, HIV, uh, infectious diseases, non-communicable diseases, and mental health. So if you are coming to it, your research work should be in one of these. And it also has four population tracks, which uh, includes um, um, the modern child population, adolescent and young women, um, men, and... Um, Maybe I'm, the other one is going off my head. And then we have three science track, which is the laboratory science, health system science, and uh, implementation science. So if people want to come in, you have to pick from a, a disease track, a population track, and a science track. Put your work together. Applications are currently ongoing, and they will be ending on the 1st of October. Uh, more information is available in the CBC Health Services website and Facebook for those who are interested. And there I've, I've also kept my email address where I can be contacted for people who need more information or if they need to get a mentor. So probably that is um, um, a summary of that, that program. 20 African countries? 20 African countries. No, not... 20, 20 countries, countries in the world. Yeah, Cameroon inclusive. Yes. And, and uh, but how many uh, people would be maybe taken? I mean, uh, maybe 10. Usually they take 10 per year. Among the most competitive. The most yes. Yeah. Founders, but uh, the current batch that is going on, there are 15. And out of that 15, there are four Kenyans. Yeah, no Cameroonian. Uh, so I thought that Cameroonians are not aware of this opportunity. They can come and pick it up. Can they call you on phone, maybe? you have a phone number? Do you share a phone number for them to call? Okay, the no, let them get to the CBC website mm -hmm. and um, they'll see more information and my email address. Okay. I prefer to communicate through email mm -hmm. than phone. So, so many opportunities there from the University of uh, Alabama and Birmingham. Yeah, Alabama and, at Birmingham. At Birmingham. Mm -hmm. And um, Cameroonians, is there any age limit? No, no, there is no age mm -hmm. limit. Okay. It's just that you should have a doctorate degree and you should not be older than eight years. Older than? Eight years. The doctorate degree a should not be older degree. than eight years. Above eight years, you are no longer qualified. Okay. Yeah, and then um, people should know that it's highly competitive. Okay. But those who merit it will get it. Thank you. Now, let's come back to our topic. Training of paramedical staff, understanding ongoing reforms, and I said it's part one. Apparently, it is too early 
to start saying that the training of these personnel has not been suspended. I've been having lots of uh, messages coming up here. One from Dr. Ningonyam, who is also taking part, uh, is meeting with the officials of the ministries involved. The HND and BTS has been stopped by both ministries. They said it in a meeting. There would be no admissions for HND and BTS starting this year. They did not write it in the communique, but... It was said during the meeting. Well, for now, we shall be um, limiting ourselves to what was written. And if the decision has been taken that this is going to be suspended, or it is already suspended, then I'm sure officials of the ministry will be communicating. And um, students should be watchful also before they register. Uh, maybe <laughs> if they register and find out eventually that it has been suspended, it will be a problem. So um, I really have... Um, I know that the ministries have been communicating on this, and I think they will be communicating soon. Now, gentlemen, let us conclude on this topic to talk about what should be the way forward. What should Cameroonians expect? Because there was a problem. People working in hospitals, some are assistant nurses, some have uh, uh, the HND, others have BTS, others have the first degree, all of them are called nurses, all of them are called laboratory technicians, all of them this. What should be the take home? Uh, as the government is trying to solve for, all of this for, for, for me i think the take home is that uh, we should be a bit patient after all as i say what the government is doing now is that they are trying to solve a problem we are trying to harmonize programs and harmonize work in such a way that the output will be better for the Cameroonians who are out there to receive health care and i would not like uh, us to have that feeling like some of my panelists were saying that the Professional trained with HND from the high institutions are bad. No, we have not said they are not bad professionals. After all, when you go to the training institutions, whether from those under the Ministry of Public Health or those in higher education, you have good products and uh, you also have bad products. It depends sometimes on the trainers and it depends too on the individual practitioner or the individual professionals who are there in training and other factors surrounding training for somebody to come out. And again, we must also take note that when the uh, people get trained and they get out to the field there, much of the skills to deliver healthcare are acquired on the field there. And those of them who are serious and who have a devotion to take care of sick people, they usually excel, whether you are from higher education or Ministry of Public Health. And I say it comes back to the fact that after all, in the final analysis, we will need that degree of control. We need the council to be active so that they can be able to ensure that at least on the few practitioners are given better quality care. Because if we, what, what, what is going on now, honestly, it is not good. For what we have experienced on the field, it's not good. The Pendo Kingsley Mokam, what is the take on? Yeah, I have uh, some four issues that is on my mind. First, the aptitude test is absolutely unnecessary. Why do I say so? Because, as I said earlier, some of these state registered staff were trained by HND graduates. Some have been practicing for 20 years and more, 15. They have all the experience on the field. So if they do the aptitude test and they say, okay, you have to go back to school and somebody does not have that time, the but family to you have, go to school. Why are you scared of aptitude tests? If you have been working for 15, <laughs> 20 years, you should be apt enough to go for the test and, you know. Yes, why you scared absolutely, of I'm not scared. I, as a, a person, but do we have the infrastructure? If they said I have to put it on an end or like the NCLEX type, which is competent based, we have the infrastructure, and you work on the machine and it shuts down when you have reached the, the limit mark and not writing an exam for somebody to mark, I will have no doubt. But there's a lot of uncertainty when it has to do with writing exams to be marked. Next, uh, I want to also call on the Ministry of Health that if, like we are saying, the communique is not explicit. If they have stopped the admission of students to the first term, then the Ministry of Health should compensate higher institutions by giving them students after the concours. When they write the concours, because there are higher institutions with the infrastructure, the investment that is commensurate to what the other institutions or the Ministry of, of Public Health have. So the concours should have these higher institutions to ha receive students, and then we are not scared or bothered to use the curriculum of the Ministry of Public Health to train them and let them call it a state diploma and not uh, H and you have no problem. Just like uh, my panelist member has said, the council should go beyond fighting HND. 
because I've never heard of the council organizing a conference, an empowerment, a symposium, or this, or even offering scholarships, or even doing some other things. This is the only time I've heard about the, the council. I remember. I'm not a member. We are those who are suffering the council. We have been blocked from entering into the council because we did the HND system of education. So the council should go beyond fighting HND and let its presence be known in control and other empowerment and issues. Now, when I look at the the, the publication launching for the recruitment, there are some appellations which were not existent. I don't know. I'm seeing medical lab in physiotherapy. Medical lab. I don't know what is a translation error, but this is the version I'm reading in English. Medical lab in uh, medical imaging. Medical lab in pharmacy. Medical lab in dentistry. Where is all this coming from? If the ministry is taking over from the ministry, ministry of public health, is taking over from the ministry of higher education, it should be humble enough to call it pharmacy technology, physiotherapy, dental therapy, medical imaging technician, and stop giving these other names on it to make it look like it's something new. Let us accept the fact that the ministry of higher education introduced these programs in the health sector where there was a lapse and they have solved a problem. So the ministry of public health should carry them the way it is or it give us the curriculum because all we need is just curriculum that is it and we follow it we train it and they call it the state diploma we have no problem with that dr tata valentine it's uh it's really a difficult situation but um we have two possible solutions uh the first is we maintain our system and we get just the curriculum and we continue because if we're talking about taking over, it means that we are going to be jumping back into the old shoes. What in effect am I saying? With a state diploma, you will still need to write another examination, of course, in order to qualify to get a bachelor's degree. You already heard Dr. Nick say, uh, the minister said he was going to give out the, the, the bachelor's degrees to those who had, who, are, who, who had been practicing so they are able to come back to school. No, why? then we don't have to do that. We continue with our higher education system, and the other one remains the same. And you are going to work, but imagine working for 15 years with a state diploma. They should understand that when it comes to progression, academic progression, it is higher education. Higher education has the prerogatives to give out authorizations. And that they give authorizations for schools to function, it means that there are some connections, or I'll put it, some consultations that took place. So, what we are looking at is that the HND entry into, into, the level, into the first year should be maintained. They are not going to suspend it. It should be maintained. We only get the curriculum that is coming from there, and we continue from there. Thank you, Dr. Tata. The last word to you, Professor Simon Manga. So, Cameroonians should get on their marks and start applying those who are qualified for this program. Yes, I think because we don't have much time, uh, but the program is a, it's a program that will be going on for several years. It was made to run for five years. This is the fourth year. But now the grant has been renewed. So now there is another five years and it may be renewed again. So I think those who are not qualified now can um, work on building up their CV, building up their research proposals, and they may be qualified either in the ensuing years. Fully funded? It's fully funded, okay. yeah. That's where we end today's edition of Twilight and CRTV News. The theme of our discussion was training of paramedical staff, understanding ongoing reforms, and it's one part in a series we are beginning. We had Professor Simon Manga, Assistant Professor of Reproductive Health at CBC Health Services, and also University of Alabama at Birmingham, UAB. Dr. Nick Nguanyam, a surgeon urologist, founder of St. Louis University Institute, answered a call from Douala. Dr. Tata Valentine is a member of the National Association of Private Higher Education Institutions. And the Pendo Kingsley Mukam is a pharmacy technician and an official of the St. Louis University Institute. We also had Ayango Jonathan, a male midwife. <laughs> He's a midwife. I am Moki. Edwin Kinzika in Yaoundé, thank you for watching.